Hello, uh, everyone. Uh, thank you very much for joining uh, our next discussion. This is the Next TV Southeast Asia's virtual gathering. Uh, and our panel discussion will focus on the subject uh, this time around, exploring uh, TV broadcasters' strategic insights. Now, uh, my name is Sarah Clark. I'm simply navigating this conversation. We have two fabulous panellists who are with us now. Uh, sadly, one of our panellists, uh, Reggie Bautista, um, had a problem with her flight. Uh, she's from the GMA network and couldn't join us. But we do have two other um, panellists. I'll start with you, Sotu Ra. Uh, he's from Channel K, Myanmar. We've got Martin Webb. Uh, he's a senior uh, product manager from Cloud TV, Comcast Technology Solutions. I'm going to start straight away with you guys. If you can give me basically like a 60 second uh, elevator pitch profile piece of who you are, your company and the market that you're working with. So, so I'll start with you. Uh, yes. Uh, hi, everybody. Uh, good evening and uh, good afternoon. So uh, my name is Sutu Rad. Uh, I'm Chief Operating Officer from Chenaki, Myanmar. Uh, the Chenaki is, uh, which is newly uh, digital free to air channel, uh, which is, uh, we started launch on 2018. And uh, yes, we are now like four years uh, old now. But uh, I have uh, some other experience in the uh, follower group also. Yep. Uh, so this is, uh, what about me and yes, that's all. Yeah. Martin, uh, Comcast technology solutions. Give me a, a brief on who you are, your role, uh, and your company. Thank you very much. Yes. My name is Martin Webb. I'm the senior product manager for our cloud TV solution here at Comcast technology solutions. Um, CTS as we abbreviate it. So Comcast technology solutions is the technology arm of Comcast. Uh, we bring Comcast technology to market. And my focus with the Cloud TV solution is helping broadcasters and operators globally um, with their digital transformation journeys. Uh, so that's something we see as happening in two stages. Uh, we'll dive into that, I'm sure, as the panel progresses. But our Cloud TV solution is something that is a technology platform that can help broadcasters and operators with a complete end-to-end -end service for monetizing and delivering content to consumers. Okay, and a note to the audience, if uh, there was any question or um, subject they want Canvas, please feel free to add it in the chat box. Uh, we can either Canvas this during the conversation or at the end. And looking at what we will uh, explore during this uh, conversation, it'll be about 30 minutes this time because we did lose a panellist. We're looking at the growth drivers for free-to-air broadcasters, uh, diversification options, uh, advertising and monetization strategies, and free-to-air broadcasters going OTT, what are the strategies? So looking at uh, getting straight into one of the, the key topical issues and something that's really infected, uh, impacted, I should say, um, uh, consumer behaviour and the way we do watch um, TV, et cetera, the impact of COVID. I'll start with you. Uh, so looking at your market in Myanmar, what's it, the impact been on your particular market? Um, looking at COVID, sadly, which continues. Uh, yes, so... You know that all the industry in Myanmar face uh, different types of uh, challenge uh, regarding the impact of COVID-19. So all the sector have struggled to survive and conclude the the specific situation. We uh, as a media uh, sector, uh, which is also the industry entertainment, had counter enormous like uh, challenge also. So yes, uh, we, we have to double up so many uh, strategies to maintain our position to uh, attain, to desire uh, the market share. And uh, we create a lot of content strategy which are uh, integrated uh, to those uh, situations. And um, as I have mentioned earlier, uh, firstly, we align our content production based on the internet of uh, and the interest of the entire stakeholder uh, of the industry. So uh, we change the essence of our content, uh, which is uh, basically aimed to produce the, the things of empathy of, uh, like, like uh, so uh, empathy and uh, sympathy, yeah. So we develop head-related content also. The, the education content focus on uh, prevention of uh, COVID-19, like, like those kind of programs. And uh, rather than entertainment content, uh, we deliver uh, more recreational content for the viewer. Yeah. 
Martin, looking at it's Comcast, you did a study or Comcast did a study on, on the COVID impact um, in the Middle East. What were some of the kind of key findings that uh, were of interest um, or, or insightful? Yes, so obviously as a technology vendor, we can't uh, comment directly on the impact of COVID, but we did publish a paper last year. It was looking at the MENA market more generally. It's available on the on our Comcast Technology Solutions website uh, called Riding the Premium Content Wave. Um, and that did note um, a key point about large screen consumption um, in the MENA region. Large screen consumption was, before the pandemic, less than 20% of total video consumption. Um, and that surged to more than 70% during the lockdowns, which kind of makes sense. You know, people are stuck at home, they graduate to the largest screen available. Um, but what was really interesting from us from that statistic was how even after the pandemic, large screen viewing has dropped back a, a, a little bit, but it's only dropped back to about 50%, um, suggesting that the pandemic has perhaps led to some longer term changes in content viewing. Um, and of course, associated with the large screen viewing is a demand for better picture quality, uh, a demand for more premium content. And so for us, what we see is that creates a rising tide for all boats. Um, when consumers in a market start demanding that higher quality, it leads to demand for different kinds of technologies, uh, a greater focus on anti-piracy technologies, a uh, greater focus on uh, flexible monetization. Um, and so we see we saw that trend in the MENA region. Um, we haven't studied the Southeast Asia region directly, but I'm sure the trend would be reflected there too. Long-term changes in, in consumer behaviour being um, attached to entertainment and TV. Looking back to you, so you've had a double um, kind of hit, I suppose you could say, uh, or two uh, big impacts looking at COVID. Of course, we've also had the coup um, being an additional compounding um, uh, element What's the latest with that and what strategies were used to mitigate or certainly cope with the negative effects? Um, yes, actually, the, the, the strategy is uh, we, uh, as of our country situation, you know, the, there is a coup and COVID. So uh, what we are doing is uh, we, we just only focus on the content strategy. So we have to do like a specific content uh, strategy for our specific audience. So we, we, we do um, create the, 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 the more, uh, the, the, the more uh, focus on our audience. So, so all the production are produced uh, and measure of everyone's safety. And, uh, and also we use uh, minimum waffles to create the TV show also. So yes, uh, this is, this is uh, what we are doing until now, yeah. What kind of impact did it have on, on production generally and, and, and long-term going, going forward? Actually, so we, we have to re recite the, the production uh, the, 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 we, because uh, normally we produce like, uh, like big production and the former show, but now we are only producing like uh, our own uh, in-house program also so so the impact is like uh, basically uh, we we have to like focus on our our the, our uh, strategy for 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 our own uh, situation so we we, we cannot uh, rely on the the the, the strategy for the, the whole country so we we have to focus on our own uh, uh, channel first and then uh, for the audience what we have to do uh, what we can do so like yes we are doing like day by day uh, the, the operation yeah it's linear it's still very it's still much very much exists um in southeast yeah. asian homes uh, but it's not the case obviously in all markets very very different perspectives across the apac region what, what are the main challenges faced by linear tv today martin can you give us an insight into to this um so Linear is still, you know, a very significant part of content consumption. Um, and I see the challenge not so much as being a challenge for linear, but um, a challenge of organizations addressing digital transformation. Um, what I introduced at the beginning, the idea of digital transformation, how we were helping broadcasters and operators with that. We see digital transformation as something that takes place in two stages. 
Um, the first is where online is just treated as a, a bolt on by the business, something just to try to get working. Um, but it's the second phase where linear uh, possibly has the challenge. And that is as organizations try to integrate online viewing into their core strategy. Um, so it becomes a digital first strategy. And in that context, linear has a strong place to play, but it's one in a world uh, or in an organization that's no longer operating uh, in silos. And so for us, the challenge is an organizational one as businesses transform their teams and their technology stacks and their organization structures to deal with uh, that new approach. Yeah, and that's, I mean, sticking with that and kind of moving into the transition to digital new audiences and, and technologies. Uh, Martin, you know, what's your expertise and how can you help broadcasters who know nothing about digital uh, make that transition? Is it, how can you help them transit? Sorry, I had the phone on mute. There's a, a lorry driving past the house. Apologies for that. Um, so for us, the uh, key way we can help uh, organizations is transforming that technology. Um, they, as organizations pivot from this first stage of digital transformation to the second stage, um, it's largely about migrating technology stacks to the cloud. And the key benefit that brings is enabling organizations to run a single platform um, for both their broadcast uh, and their online, their linear and their on demand. Uh, and that brings with it a number of uh, key benefits. Um, you know, for example, uh, a single source of truth for metadata um, brings with it consistent cross-platform functionality. There are a number of other benefits that we've discussed in another set of papers available on our website. Um, but for us, the key um, opportunity that opens up is a set of growth options for broadcasters um, who perhaps have been struggling to find new routes to growth. Digital transformation creates a whole set of new uh, growth options, um, not just from um, SVOD, but AVOD routes, um, flexible workflows, for example, allowing fast clipping and um, which creates new advertising inventory. There's a whole set of new growth options that uh, digital transformation opens up. So feel free to, to weigh in on that one. When, when you do, when, when... No, operators do switch from linear to digital. Which audiences do, do they target? Now, is it the one you already have or the new one? How do you convince them? So what, what are your thoughts? Um, actually, the, what, what we are doing right now is that we all, uh, not only we are sharing the audience, but also we share the, the total incoming market of the station. And so uh, to those uh, digital platform, we also uh, double up digital strategy to attract and maintain the audience who would interact with the multi screen also. Uh, so yes, uh, to answer the question of uh, overtaking, uh, yeah, digital platform on TV viewing have a lot of viewer uh, in, in, in the country like uh, Myanmar. Like like uh, in Myanmar, they, they like to stay uh, watching TV because of the exclusive and authentic content uh, which are produced uh, by organization. So not not too too uh, difficult to handle those kind of uh, audience in here. So yeah, uh, this is what we are doing right now. Look, what about um, monetization strategy? Which one is best um, when it comes to subscription, um, advertising, hybrid, and why? So you're you're looking like you want to jump in on this one. Um, yes, but like we for, uh, when I we we have a like a ODD platform also, but uh, at the situation of the country, we we stop the our OTT app. Uh, we just stop. And, and in the aspect of yeah 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 we 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 don't have uh, any uh, business model for those uh, we just given uh, them the free uh, access uh, but uh, as you know we have um, a VIU and uh, which is uh, currently uh, the international app uh, which is running in Myanmar is like VIU. So they are doing like uh, uh, S ball and T ball, E ball, and like hybrids also. Uh, we are now developed uh, the the new version of app, uh, so that the audience can consume our content on digital platform. Actually, we are redesigning. 
So our engineer app uh, to the new one to meet all the specifications of uh, user in the app. So our target audience will be a uh, nation, uh, nation, nationwide, and we are targeting different age group. So, but uh, for the monetization, uh, uh, we only focus on advertising. Yeah. So subscription uh, we have, but very little, uh, very few. So we we have to collaborate with the telecom and. Uh, we give them the, some sort of uh, giveaway, like uh, if you use uh, those telecom, you can uh, get free access for all the uh, content, something like that. So we only focus on the advertising, which is uh, we call multi advertising, like uh, in, on multi screen. If you uh, if you uh, use uh, commercial on TV, then you can get uh, some spot in app also. So those kind of, so yet here in the situation is uh, very, I think it's a little bit different from the other country and the other app. Yeah. So, so but yeah. While I've still got you looking at, uh, you know, your market, could you tell us about the coverage and the penetration of the digital free to wear uh, in Myanmar and your market? Actually, the, the penetration, uh, you, uh, so we, we have uh, like 80, 78 uh, percent of the coverage uh, the, the, the we, digital free to is is covered by 78 percent of the whole country yeah okay but moving on to content um i think it's uh, um, and, and sorry, just know, right, one point two, um on that uh, monetization strategy i think uh, just coming at this from a, a global perspective um we see the same kind of trends played out uh, globally as well with uh, the broadcasters we've been working with. And I think one of the um, interesting trends is that until now, a lot of the focus has been on subscription uh, SBOD yeah. services, particularly the, the global providers. Um, but in most countries, SBOD stacking is increasing. So by SBOD stacking, I mean the concept where users have multiple yeah. subscriptions at home. Uh, that's increasing to the point of not being sustainable. And so with even the biggest players in the market looking to pivot towards an advertising model, I think that creates a wonderful opportunity for broadcasters um, since it brings the market and the monetization model back to what was traditionally the broadcaster stronghold um, of advertising. And with the digital transformation um, opportunities that have opened up, that both creates new inventory and adds value to existing inventory. So I think broadcasters sit on um, the start of a really interesting journey. And do you see that particular journey happening across the, the global market or is there a, a market that's going to lead, do you think, um, looking at this model? The US has always been very much ahead with advertising. And I think what's really interesting about this trend is that um, advertising, particularly um, uh, dynamic and targeted advertising um, has lagged behind in most other regions just because the technology for ad replacement hasn't been as prevalent on um, the traditional linear side. Um, but with that uh, pivoting towards AVOD services, that trend is now playing out across the world as more and more organizations invest in dynamic advertising technology. Well, look, looking at content and continuing on the OTT and linear um, you know, scale, how different are the lines of work when it comes to curating content, either one of you? Um, so? Yeah. <laughs> uh, so uh, for, for the con content, uh, the perspectives of uh, content production. Uh, so I believe that content can be the main uh, factor that uh, can influence the viewer. Uh, the viewer desire of or watching a channel or subscription to the OTT service. Yeah. So as a somewhere in our country, the most uh, powerful content is a uh, local drama series, like uh, the, 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 our original uh, local drama series, and then they are popular among the viewer. And we do have a lot of content that can bring to the audience interest. Uh, uh, so depending on the type of your service, uh, you can align with, with the content creation, which is uh, relevant uh, to the contest. Uh, you can achieve your desire of the audience group. Yeah. What about exclusive content to the OTT platform? Um, Either one of you, Martin or, or so I'm... I'm... 
So um, we obviously don't deal with the editorial workflows directly. We provide the technology to enable the broadcasters to deal with that. But what we do see is that um, another opportunity opened up with this second stage of digital transformation is the um, ability to deploy more flexible workflows. Um, so with those flexible workflows comes the ability to uh, publish content into a much greater variety of uh, locations uh, on a much more dynamic basis. So before perhaps it was a case where the linear channel led and then the online service was used as purely as a catch up player. With these flexible workflows, it's possible for Linear to lead with live events, for the on-demand service to lead with uh, tentpole drama content, um, for fast clipping workflows to syndicate chunks of uh, a live event to social media really, really quickly to generate buzz around a live event, um, for social media to be used to um, publish the first episode in a new series and draw users into a subscription service. The point is everything starts becoming much more meshed together. Uh, and that's only possible with the flexibility that comes with cloud-based technology. Looking at, I mean, diversification of revenue streams, which is a, a, another area which I, I can focus on with you, Martin, looking at new ways to create revenue, what, what are you working on? Um, <clears throat> excuse me. So um, there are many, many growth options that are opened up by um, moving to the cloud and, and uh, thinking from a digital first perspective. Um, we try to cover these on our set of papers. Um, I, it's, I, I don't want to take up too much time with the panel going through them, but um, we've talked about a few already in terms of uh, publishing content to uh, social media, um, creating new ad inventory, ad, increasing the value of existing ad inventory. One key way for doing that is that many broadcasters um, pivot to uh, mandatory authentication. It's a relatively cheap piece of technology to add onto the platform. And with that, it starts to create the ability to create um, a data set about your users. Um, so with that aggregated and anonymized data set, you can start to build a much stronger picture about what your audience as a whole is looking to do and use that data to optimize um, your library and how you invest in content. Um, there are many other options. International diversification is a key one. That's uh, perhaps one of the harder ones to deploy, but it's one where the broadcasters we've worked with have seen quite a bit of success. It's harder because of the um, issues with licensing content for overseas distribution. Um, but most countries have an expat audience abroad who crave a taste of home. Uh, and so alleged that, you know, talked about that point a second ago with um, the fact that local content from local broadcasters really taps into what uh, a local market is interested in. So that cloud-based transformation opens up a multiple uh, set of uh, potential growth options. And I'll come back to you, so in a moment, but looking at that, the cloud solution, it, can it be a strategic advantage? Certainly, certainly looking at uh, reductions in or terms of cost reductions, is that kind of a, um, an avenue? Yes. So by pivoting to thinking digital first, as I said, it's much more of a business change as well as a technology change. Um, it's about combining two separate silos of the business into a single entity. Um, with that comes obviously the cost reductions from not having to run two platforms in two places with two technology stacks, um, perhaps with two strategies that are conflicting with each other. Um, so there's the, the cost reduction simply from uh, streamlining teams. But you also then get the cost reductions from simpler operations. If you have one team managing the whole platform holistically, then it becomes a lot simpler to manage and operate the platform. And again, that reduces costs. So sticking with revenue streams, how else can broadcasters, and certainly look, obviously looking at your market, Myanmar, how can you diversify those, those revenue streams? What are some options that uh, you think should be pursued? Uh, yes, uh, as uh, we are sharing our income uh, to the digital channel, yes, uh, nowadays that we have to share more income to them. So, so we are developing some the digital strategy uh, which can relate uh, relate to the TV content 
and uh, by doing this, uh, we we recover revenue uh, generating. So the three tax uh, that we have been uh, working to cover our expenses is that we uh, we create OTT and, uh, and other digital channel like uh, Facebook, YouTube, and uh, we create interactive content uh, which can drive us like decent income uh, system. So yes, uh, we are we are doing like like those kind of uh, three uh, channel, yeah, three digital channel we are using uh, like. We can sh we can get some share some pies from them so and technologies that can deliver cost reductions for you so uh yes so so basically um so the the cost uh the, the, the production is not much different for us yeah Okay, looking at um, some of the challenges um, in the region, how, how to tackle piracy from a broadcaster's point of view? Martin, this might be something where you could engage on. It's a big issue. Uh, what are some of the solutions? So, as I said at the beginning, when markets pivot to um, demanding more premium content as we're seeing that, that trend play out across multiple countries and multiple regions that creates a rising tide um, or that improved content and with that becomes comes the increased risk of piracy um, but also the ability to monetize that content and so anti-piracy technology um, isn't free um, but with that drive towards more premium content it creates space in the budget to invest uh, in those technologies. Uh, and I think really the first starting point is in many cases uh, investing in security and DRM. Um, again, moving to the cloud provides a, actually provides a stronger platform for that because um, the cloud-based, the typical uh, cloud vendors um, have a strong incentive to invest in the latest security technologies. And as a user of those cloud-based platforms, you have the um, ability to benefit from that um, single investment. Um, but then I think moving on from there, watermarking will become increasingly key. We see a number of um, customers weighing up that as a potential route, um, particularly targeting uh, the high profile events and, and sports events. Um, and so there's a, a greater acceptance of the need to invest in anti-piracy security and watermarking technologies uh, across the world. So looking at piracy um, in your market, is there a solution and is it a growing problem? For us, uh, I think there is uh, no, uh, for the privacy uh, solution is the, the, the biggest issue. Uh, as as uh, if, if you have uh, some sort of uh, the knowledge uh, of Myanmar, so we, we have a, uh, even on, our brokers channel, they have a private uh, content. So we don't have a, here we do not have a, a, the, 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 the copyright uh, the association here. So I don't, I don't think we, 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 we cannot do nothing much here. So, but yet uh, for, for the traditional media uh, ethic, we, we have to like uh, uh, reduce and not not we 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 tell them not not to do that uh, so much and yes okay looking at winding up um this this subject or this conversation leaving you both with a minute each um on on what you think is a conclusive conclusive statement it could be where the, the market's heading what technology is needed uh, to progress the market martin I'm, i'll start with you take us where you'd like um to end on this this topic of tv broadcasters strategic insights yes thank you i think um for us it's artificial intelligence and machine learning is going to be the key new piece of technology um we think it's going to touch every aspect of the workflow um and we all the way from connecting content with consumers with more detailed metadata um engaging them with different journeys through that content um technologies like using machine learning for auto highlights and 
uh, you know, generating an automatic highlights package from sports content, uh, and even to monetizing the content. So using the enhanced metadata, not just the descriptive metadata, but machine-based scene level metadata that describes what's going on in each section of the content being used to help provide more inputs into advertising engines uh, to help select the best adverts to follow on from a piece of content. Um, and so artificial intelligence and machine learning is going to touch all aspects of video production and, and distribution. And uh, for us, that is um, a key technology area. Um, and one we are investing quite heavily in with our video AI product. And so your thoughts, your conclusion on uh, on this subject it can be anywhere you want to take us on the whether you see the market evolving, uh, the challenges that we face. Over to you. Yeah, yeah. I, um, for for me and uh, like uh, the, 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 the 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 current step. Uh, market uh, representing the STEM market. I, I believe for the future, no matter what the platform will be, uh, the authentic content and the original content will attain the interest of uh, audience. And in the future, there will be uh, more rising digital user, but also uh, they're going to be the audience uh, who like to watch the, the traditional also. So in, in Yama, uh, the I think uh, the traditional will, will uh, still remain like like next ten years. So, like, uh, like I, as I said, the, the authentic content and original content uh, will be attain the audience interest. Yeah. Thank you very much, sir, and thank you very much, Martin, for um, this conversation for the last thirty minutes. Apologies to the audience for missing one of our panelists' um, unforeseen circumstances. Um, if the audience wants to join into the next chat, that will be happening in about 45 minutes' time. And the content or the subject for that a conversation is how are analytics shaping operators' revenues and content strategy. Thank you very much, everyone, for joining us. Martin and So, thank you again. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.